Hi, I'm uh, Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Uh, it's not uncommon uh, to get a big STEMI uh, after a, a snowstorm. Uh, we certainly have had our fair share at our uh, hospital. But um, we're going to talk about a doozy today uh, with PCI performed in a patient in full arrest uh, with uh, continuous chest compressions uh, from the Lucas device. So the patient is a 55-year-old man uh, with no medical history uh, who uh, clutched his uh, chest and collapsed in his driveway uh, while uh, shoveling snow. His son, uh, who was next to him, uh, called 911 and his wife uh, started CPR uh, right away. Uh, when EMS got there, uh, he was in VF. Um, he got three shocks, uh, ACLS medications, more CPR. Uh, EMS got ROSC after about 15 minutes and he was uh, intubated. Uh, ECG post-ROSC showed a massive uh, anterior and inferior uh, ST elevations. Um, EMS uh, activated the STEMI team uh, from the field. So uh, in the ED, the patient got aspirin, heparin, and ticagrelor through an OG tube. Uh, but unfortunately, he went back into VF. Um, he got two more shocks, more epinephrine, and now also amiodarone. He got ROSC again after about 10 minutes. He got bicarb. Um, his uh, uh, systolic uh, post-ROSC was in the 70s, uh, and the levofed drip um, was uh, started. Uh, he uh, maintained ROS for about 10 minutes and was taken up to the lab uh, by our team. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, he started having runs of non-sustained VT in the elevator and arrested again in the hallway upstairs. Uh, the cath lab nurse jumped onto the stretcher and did chest compressions as the team flew down the hallway with his stretcher into the lab. Uh, he got one more shock, more epinephrine, and had ROS again uh, when he got into the room. But when he got on the table, uh, he went into VF again. He got another shock. He had more runs of non-sustained VT. Lidocaine was started. Um, the staff applied the Lucas. Um, I got access and slammed in a balloon pump, uh, which is all the circulatory support that we had. Um, we did not have uh, Impella or ECMO uh, at the center. And um, here was my first shot with the patient in VF uh, getting active uh, compressions uh, from the Lucas. Uh, doing a cath and PCI with the Lucas is no fun, but uh, it can be done. As you can see, there's lots of motion from the device, and because of the size of the thing, uh, you generally have to use steep cranial or uh, caudal angulations. Uh, getting access can be a challenge with all the motion, and you might uh, have to pause the Lucas briefly to do it. And same thing for uh, getting engaged and for uh, wiring. Uh, you can see here uh, the uh, clear culprit lesion in the mid-LED. Uh, this cine was actually taken while the patient was still in VF. So the coronary flow that you see is due completely to the chest compressions from the Lucas. So it's actually quite remarkable how effective the uh, chest compressions are. It, it looks basically like Timmy 3 flow. So I did PCI in rapid fashion, uh, wired the lesion easily with a BMW. I quickly pre-dilated with a 3.0 balloon, uh, stented with a 3.5 by 28 DES, and post-dilated with a 4.0 uh, NC balloon. And here's what I had after LED PCI. The uh, result uh, looks good, uh, but the patient was still in and out of VF and still dependent uh, on the uh, Lucas. Uh, by this point, we had already shocked them at least 10 times in the cath lab, uh, despite amiodarone and lidocaine. He would um, get ROSC and then start having uh, a non-sustained VT and then go back uh, into VF again. So I decided to put in a TVP to try to overdrive pace him. Uh, you see here the TVP. Uh, the, uh, the LED looked good uh, in this angulation as well. Lastly, the TVP uh, did not really work. Uh, the patient was still back in VF. The Lucas went back on, and I, and I went after the right. Um, here I am trying to get into the RCA. I had a tough time with the Lucas going. Uh, my adrenaline was pumping, and uh, the high and anterior RCA didn't really help things. So I uh, paused the Lucas to engage the RCA, and he actually had ROSC at this point. Um, you can see uh, more severe stenoses in the proximal and distal RCA, and I decided to go after both of them. 
Uh, PCI here was a little more tricky uh, because of the tenuous engagement, but I got a pro water down there and uh, pre-dilated with a 2.5 balloon, and I then stented the distal lesion with a uh, 3.5 by 18 uh, DES and uh, covered the uh, uh, proximal RCA with a uh, 4 by 38 DES. I then post-dilated with 3.5 and 4 uh, NC balloons. And the uh, final result in the RCA looked good as well. Um, we finally got durable ROSC about 10 minutes uh, after this picture. In total, uh, this patient received 17 shocks in the cath lab, in addition to the shocks he got with EMS in the ED and in the hallway. Uh, we were able to get him flown out of uh, our hospital uh, to our tertiary center uh, for emergency impella and uh, possible ECMO. So um, this was a desperate case in a young and desperately ill patient. And I must say, the outcomes for PCI on patients without ROSC is, is dismal. Uh, these are by necessity all uh, small retrospective studies. Uh, but in this uh, uh, 2019 study of the six, uh, 56 patients with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest who came to the cath lab without ROSC and supported by the Lucas device, only one patient uh, survived to discharge a 98% uh, mortality. This uh, 2022 study was only slightly better. Uh, of 48 patients with acute MI and cardiac arrest uh, who came to the cath lab for PCI supported by the Lucas device, 33 died in the cath lab, seven died in the hospital, and only eight survived to discharge, an 83% uh, mortality. All right, take home messages. Um, doing PCI on STEMI patients uh, without ROSC is a Hail Mary and not for the faint of heart. Uh, the Lucas device does provide excellent chest compressions and can maintain nearly normal coronary perfusion even with the patient in ventricular fibrillation. But even so, uh, overall outcomes are dismal and it's a very long shot. Uh, but for the right patient uh, in the community setting uh, without uh, impella, it may be worth uh, and it may be worth it as a bridge uh, to transfer to a tertiary center for Impella or ECMO. Thank you for watching.